Yo, what's going on guys? Havoc here now. Back! Today we're gonna be discussing 17 things only Clash Clans OGs may remember R6. You already know, we're back at it again going down memory lane, and if you like these kinds of videos, hey, over the past two years I've made five others that I highly recommend watching, so the playlist will be at the end of the video and links down below. Anyways, with that being said, let's get right into it. Let's do this. 2015 Barracks Rework. So we all know the old barracks screen. It went through some changes, but it was pretty much the same for years. And then we have our current one that's been almost the exact same since 2016. But wait a minute, I could have sworn there was another one that looked nothing like either of these. Well, you're probably remembering this very short-lived rework to the barracks screen. It was like this from June 2015 to October 2016, so you can see why it's easy to forget. It's the first iteration of combining all army buildings in one screen, but your barracks were still independent. None of the buildings were connected, so it was literally just a mix of the old system and the new system. I'm not even gonna lie, I don't even remember it being like this. <laughs> but maybe it's just me, 2015 and 16 is all a blur. Trap Text Bubbles We've talked about having to rearm traps before in a previous episode, but one thing you might remember from way back when is the text bubbles above a trap. It was exclamation points, and its purpose was to get your attention so that you can rearm it, and boy did it work. It was incredibly obvious and one of the first things you notice when you logged on. However, this was a very short-lived feature. Traps got upgrades in November 2013 and displayed these text bubbles, but only a month later, they would replace these text bubbles with a smoke effect instead. They still have this smoke effect today, but it's not very common to see, since you know your base does it by itself, but you still can see it visiting a base that's been offline for a while. But damn, I still remember those damn text bubbles that caught your eye right away. Old League Format Leagues in Clash have pretty much stayed the exact same since they were added in 2013. We've just gotten more since then, right? But if you were playing in the early days, you might have noticed that the leagues today are in a somewhat odd order. Like the bigger number comes first every time. So if you're entering Champions League, you'll start at Champions 3. Why is that? Well, I don't know, but what I do know is that it wasn't always like this. Back then, the smaller number came first because it makes sense. So if you just got to Champions League, you would start at Champions 1. Not a change that anyone would care about, but definitely something players today might have not known. Less walls at certain town halls. It's not often that a town hall gets something new after being the same for years, and when it does, it's often a new defense or an army building. But sometimes, it's walls. Town Hall 7, 10, and 11 had 25 less walls than they do today. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the reasons behind these additions, only patch notes, but I think it's safe to assume that the Town Halls just needed more walls. I'm sure if you were playing at the time, you'd definitely remember, especially if you were at one of those Town Halls. Original Gem Box Pretty small one here, but does anyone remember how the Gem Box gave a different amount of gems? This may be hard to remember because the gem box was glitched on arrival <laughs> and pretty much no one could redeem it, but for those who did, you might remember that it wasn't 25 gems, it was 20. Yeah, they increased it because of the long wait. Hero Art Contest In October 2015, a silhouette of a new hero was teased at ClashCon for the announcement of Town Hall 11. Now it's obviously the Grand Warden, right? However, that wasn't super obvious back then, and Supercell wasn't ready to reveal it, so they hosted a contest to see who could guess what it was. So, for the next month and a half, the community came together to try and guess what this hero looked like. And if you were playing at the time, you definitely remember the vast amount of pictures, leaks, and discussions, and everything. It was wild. I can't remember who won the contest because the forums are shut down, but in December it was revealed to be the Grand Warden. OG Clan Game Setup 
Okay, this is a relatively insignificant change, but have you ever noticed how over time the clan games area has gotten smaller? Well, you're not crazy. They've slowly removed some things from that area, like the tent and the campfire that used to sit there. Today, those two things are missing and the fireworks are in its place. But mysteriously, even the fireworks are missing sometimes. It's unknown why they've been removing stuff from that area, but I believe this could be because when they added super troops, a tent appeared in that area, so why have two tents, you know? There could also be more reasons, I just don't know them. Very interesting stuff. More attack time. As you all know, you have three minutes to defeat a base after you drop a troop. However, for a brief period in Clash history, you had an extra 30 seconds. This change was done in December 2015 to allow more time for bigger attacks because Town Hall 11 had just come out and you know it was bigger bigger town hall and you need more time to attack right well super so quickly reverted the change in march of 2016 so when i said brief i meant very brief for a little over three months you had three minutes and 30 seconds and i remember the change just like it was yesterday manual training in a previous episode, we talked about how you had to train different troops in different barracks and try to be as efficient as possible. But one thing I thought of recently was how you had to look for these barracks. <laughs> Before 2015, you best remember where your barracks was because there was no such thing as a train button. I've gotten so used to having it there, I could probably not go back to clicking on the barracks. It's probably one of the best time savers they've added to the game because not only do you have your barracks, you also have your entire army, so no need to click on the spell factory or any of that. Same wall rubble. Okay, I'm sure you've seen a destroyed wall before. You may not notice it a lot, but it's basically a pile of rubble with some hints of the color, right? So if the wall's blue, then the rubble will have hints of blue. Well, if you go back far enough, you'll notice that all wall rubble was the same. So a destroyed level 5 wall looked the exact same as a destroyed level 10 wall. Obviously, if I'm mentioning it today, that is no longer the case. And it's a bit different now. Every wall has its own wall rubble as far as I'm aware, but I still remember the days when they used one basic PNG for all of them. Smaller villages. Little fun fact that I think everyone knows by now, the village size has increased over time. It started at 38 by 38 tiles in 2012, then increased to 40 by 40 when the waterfall was removed, and then 44 by 44 in 2015 to accommodate the new Town Hall 11. Surely, some of you remember just how massive the size increase was in 2015. Four extra tiles in every side is no small increase. Everyone noticed right away, and back then there were no sceneries. And as you all know, sceneries give the illusion of a bigger map. The map just feels incredibly bigger than it once did, and only OGs will remember just how cramped everything felt, especially playing on an iPhone 4. Wrecked Visits Okay, I had to verify this on Twitter because <laughs> I thought I was crazy for a second. Does anyone remember visiting someone and if they were attacked their buildings were rubble? When's the last time you've seen that happen? <laughs> yeah, it's been a minute, right? I can't remember the last time when it was last in the game, but this no longer happens. Visiting a base that got wrecked, you'll see all their buildings still intact. The only key indicator is depleted traps and dead defenses if they've been off long enough. I can't say I care about it, let's be honest, it's who cares, right? But it's certainly interesting how some things change and you only notice it a while later at like 3 a.m. Like, wait a minute, that's not how it used to be. Keeping the wizards from the tutorial. You used to be able to keep the wizards from the tutorial, but not long ago there was a sneaky change to it that not many people realized. If you try to keep them, they simply disappear as if you never saved them. Which is pretty unfortunate as this used to be a beginner hack to an easy start into the game. It's not that big of a deal though, perhaps it was a glitch that was never meant to be there in the first place. And it's not like many will notice anyways, because not everyone did it. It won't have any significant impact to the tutorial, but I think most will remember when this was a quick hack shared by many in the community. Play again button. Okay, this is a pretty small one, but does anyone remember just how basic and empty the end of a replay looked like? Just for comparison, this is how it looks today. 
Some things have come so far and it's amazing to see how different it once was. I mean, this is a day and night difference. You literally had no information before, just a big old button in the middle. Healer air trap immunity. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know why they even bothered doing this. They made it so that the healers didn't trigger air traps in February of 2015, but they quickly reverted the change only a year later. Probably because Queen Walk was destroying the meta. <laughs> the healer went through a lot of changes. No secrets. I don't really know what to call this one, but it sounds pretty corny. Whatever, anyways, does anyone remember when you could visit somebody and see everything? Traps, clank hazard troops, everything. There was zero chill, all your business was out there. Obviously, Supercell started to make some changes when this became a problem, and they started with traps shortly after the game came out because the players in the leaderboards felt that traps should be a surprise. And yeah, that makes sense. However, you could still see someone's clan castle up until Clan Wars came out. That is when it became important. Spell Cancellation Penalty If you thought waiting hours for your spells was bad enough, does anyone remember when you were penalized for canceling a spell? Much like buildings where canceling only gets you a percent of it back, the same thing applied to spells up until September of 2014. <laughs> and I have no idea why that was ever a thing. It seems like back in the day, spells were a premium addition to your army, not something that you would have all the time. They cost gold, you had to wait hours, and you couldn't cancel, and if you did, you get 50% back. No wonder Barch was so popular. Anyways, yeah. Terrible times. So guys, you know the drill, that's pretty much all for today. With that being said, if you remember some stuff that is often forgot about today, which there's a lot, feel free to leave it down below in the comments. So I hope you all enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching, have a gaming out, peace!